Hi everyone, thanks for joining us for another episode of Eye on Hako. My name is Kenta, and for today's episode we'll be talking about uh, the FX951, going over the operation and the parameter settings for today's episode. Um, but before we get into today's episode, I just need to mention the fact that uh, American Hako, we remain open for business. We are part of that supply chain, providing our products and our services to the essential businesses out in the, like the medical industry, the aerospace, defense, military industry, telecommunications industry. So we remain open, and um, as we remain open, we are practicing physical distancing, wearing face coverings, uh, washing our hands, making sure that all of our staff and our customers are uh, healthy, that we keep them safe and healthy as well. So I just want to make sure that everyone out there, please stay safe and healthy as much as you can. Okay? Cool. Now, on with today's episode. Today's episode will be, like I said, on the FX951. It's one of our most popular soldering stations, uh, not only here in the U.S., but um, globally, all across the world. It's one of the most popular stations that we have here at Hako. Um, the reasoning behind that is its great performance combined with its great price point. And for the FX951, the set temperature, you can set it from 200C to 450C. Uh, is a temperature range, uh, tip series that you'll be able to use on the FX951, they're called T15 series tips. There's over 50 different tip shapes that you can use on the T15 series. There's shapes such as a conical, chisel, uh, bent J tips, knife tips, tunnels, spatulas, you name it. We have a wide selection of tips, so um, anything for your application as well. Um, also on the FX951, that was with the standard iron. The FM 2027, there's sleeves, multiple color sleeves that you can attach to the FM 2027. Green sleeves, yellow sleeves, orange, blue, and we even have a pink sleeve uh, that we added to our lineup as well. So make sure that you check those out. Those sleeves are act actually antibacterial sleeves, so they're very comfortable in your hands and they're very clean to use. So those are the antibacterial sleeves. Um, apart from the FM 2027 standard handpiece, you can always also use the FM2032 micro iron on the FX951. And, and the micro iron, the tip series are called T30 series tips, and there's six different tip shapes available for the micro iron as well. Okay, so that was just a general overview of uh, the FX951 and the different uh, accessories and the tips that you will be able to use on the FX951. Uh, Today's episode, I'm going to go over the operation and the system parameters, so let's dive right into it. Over here, we have the FX951 here. You can see there's four buttons, up and down button, and a star button on the bottom left, and the pound button on the bottom right. This is your card key, very important uh, tool to have when changing your parameters, so make sure you have the B2972 key card with you. Okay, insert that into the slot, and go ahead and turn on the station. I'm just going to go over the basic setup really quick. If you press the start button once, it'll give you a quick glance of your set temperature. 750, again, press it again, 750. Really easy. If you need to change your set temperature, use that same button, press and hold it. Your display will begin to flash, and using the combination of your uh, up and down keys along with that start button, you make your desired selection. For example, if you want to go from 750 Fahrenheit to say 725. I uh, use the star key to confirm the hundreds digit. It'll move over to the tens digit. And I use the arrows to go back, go down from five to two. Hit that, hit the star button to confirm. And over in the ones digit, I use again the arrows to go from zero to five. Hit the star to confirm. And that's it. Now I've changed uh, the set temperature from 750 to 725. Now that was all using the, uh, the star button here on the bottom left. The bottom right button, if I press that, it'll say 000. That's actually my offset value. Now what is an offset value? Offset value is used when you need to um, bring your temperature within a tighter tolerance. Okay, so what am I talking about that here? I'll show you a quick example. Let me go ahead and change the temperature back up here to 7. 50, okay, and I press this button one more, offset is zero, 
and I'm going to go ahead and make a tip measurement using the FG100B. It's our new tip thermometer. It has additional features added onto it uh, from its predecessors. It has a tip count, auto hold function, and I'm using this extended life sensor, the AS5000. So I'm going to go ahead and use the auto hold feature. And I'm just waiting for the temperature to stabilize. And once it's stabilized, you can see the thermometer is now reading 765 Fahrenheit. Now, the display on the station is reading 750. And the uh, uh, readout is reading 765. So the difference is 15 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, that's well within the temperature range of the T15 series tips. The T15 series tips fall within a plus or minus 27 degrees Fahrenheit uh, right out of the package. But say you need to get it within a tighter tolerance. Then that's when you use this offset button. Right now it's at zero offset, but if I press and hold it, you'll get access to the controls. So say I want to get it within plus or minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Then I'm going to use the arrows for, to drop the temperature, uh, maybe 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Hit enter and enter again. And I'm going to go ahead and use the FG100B. Again, use the auto hold feature. And now the new measurement is 750. It matches well, perfectly to the 750 display on my station itself. So just when you use the offset, when you use it to get your temperatures within a tighter tolerance uh, if you ever need to do so. Okay, so those are the two basic functions that you can do right off the bat uh, with the FX951. Okay, uh, oh, let me see. Now turn the station off and then let's go over the system parameters. Now within the system parameters, there are six additional controls that you're able to have access to. Uh, one of them is being able to change your temperature display from Fahrenheit to Celsius. Uh, the second one is um, changing your auto sleep time settings. The third one is setting, controlling your uh, low temperature alarm settings. The fourth one is changing your supervisor operator uh, input for your offset settings. Uh, the fifth one is turning on or off your buzzer alarms for when your uh, errors pop up for your sensor errors and your connector errors. And the last parameter setting, parameter six, is turning on or off your alarms for when your tip has reached its uh, set temperature. So I'll go over each and every one of those um, really quick with you here. Uh, remember, you, you need the key card, so you make sure you have the key card, insert it into the slot, and how you enter the parameter settings is you press and hold the up and down button, turn the station on, you'll get this display. That means parameter one. Uh, right now we're in Fahrenheit mode. You can use the arrows to toggle through F or C. C is Celsius, F is Fahrenheit. Um, I'm working in Fahrenheit right now, so I'm gonna keep it at Fahrenheit and just press the star button to confirm. It'll go over to parameter two. This is the auto sleep time setting. Right now I have it at one minute. So one minute after I place the iron away into the holder, it'll go into sleep mode. You can change that anywhere from zero, which is instant sleep, all the way up to 30 minutes. So I had it at one, but let's say I turn it to zero just to show everyone what instant sleep uh, means. Uh, press the start button again to confirm. This is the low temperature error alarm setting. Right now it's at 300 degrees. Um, it's a little bit too wide of a range, so I'm going to drop it down to 60 is its uh, minimum settings. So that means 60 degrees Fahrenheit if the tip drops below um, that threshold, below your set temperature, 60 degrees below your set temperature, then there will be an alarm going off. So I go ahead and confirm, confirm again. Parameter 4 is the operator supervisor control over your offset values. Um, zero means that the operator always needs the lock key to make any changes, um, even on the offset value. If I change that to one, 
then the operator will not need the lock key when making changes to the offset value. So I had it at zero. Let's go ahead and turn that to one and show you how that works. Uh, Private number five is turning on or off the buzzers for your sensor error and connector error alarms. I had it at one. Uh, zero means you want to turn the buzzer off. One means you want the buzzer on. Um, I'm going to keep it at on because I definitely need to know when something is going on with my station or my handpiece. Press the star to confirm again. Now this is the last parameter, parameter number six. This is also the turning on or off the buzzers for when your tip has reached its set temperature. Now zero again is off. I'm going to turn this back on and confirm. And now after the tip, when the tip has reached its set temperature of 750, you will now hear a beep. And there it is. And now it went into sleep mode because it, within the system parameters, we just changed the sleep time from one minute to zero, which is instant sleep. I go ahead and pick up the station, heats back up, beeps when it reaches temperature, put the iron away, it goes to sleep. Um, the other parameter we changed was the offset value. Um, you could not, before you couldn't change the offset value without the use of the key card. But now if I ch go ahead and press the pound button on the bottom right, I can conf check what the offset is. But if I press and hold it, I can now make changes to the offset value without having the lock key in the station. Okay. So those are the six um, additional controls that you get um, when going into the system parameters. Um, hope it wasn't too confusing. Hope I'll be able to clear things up. Uh, but now I want to go over some of the really quick, some of the error messages that may pop up that you may come across with the FX951. Confirm that. You guys remember that we changed the low temperature alarm from 300 Fahrenheit to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So that means once the temperature of the iron drops 60 degrees below 750, then there will be a uh, error that goes on. So I'm going to go ahead and try to simulate that. And there you go. That's the type of error you get. HE error. That means your temperature of your tip has dropped below its threshold once it uh, recovers, once the temperature of your tip recovers, that error message will go away. So that's the HE error. Another um, error message that you may come across on your FX951 is the CE error, which is a connector error alarm. And that simply may happen in cases like this. CE error, where maybe your connectors for your irons are not properly plugged in all the way into the station so make sure you check that plug them all the way into your station and then turn the station back on it should get rid of that ce error for you now the uh, the other uh, error that you may come across is a se error you may get that se error from uh, sensors your inside of your tips are worn out or your heaters are worn out in your soldering iron tips. A uh, quick way to just check if your soldering iron's tips are still good or not is that you get your soldering iron tip. There's these two um, contact points on the connectors of the, uh, of the tip. You want to get a resistance value between those two uh, contact points and measure it, take a measurement. They should fall uh, 8 ohms plus or minus 10%. If they fall with, out of that range, then your irons are, not your irons, your tips are bad, so it's time to replace your soldering iron tips. Um, now, if you've checked that and you found out that, you know, your tips are still good, but you're still getting the SE error alarm, another cause may be that your, um, your tip and your sleeve assembly put together may not be inserted or seated all the way into the connector themselves. They may be a little bit lifted up. Um, and that may be caused by when you're putting in the soldering iron tip into the connector, you're holding the assembly at the sleeve. You'll want to make sure that you are holding at the tip and then insert it into the connector. Don't hold it at the sleeve, hold it at the tip and then insert it into the connector. 
That way you're making sure it, uh, the tips are all the way into the connectors themselves. Um, that will get rid of your uh, SE error. And by the way, SE error just, that's what it looks like. SE error, just make sure that your tips are all the way in and it gets rid of that error for you. Okay. Um, talking about the sleeves, again, these sleeves, they're good to have. We have them available in different colors. Uh, like I said, yellow, orange, blue, green, pink. It's good to have different colors available like that. Um, one way you can uh, make use of the different colors is that you can have, say, a green sleeve for lead-free applications, and you can have, say, a blue sleeve attached to your tips for leaded applications. That's just one way you can uh, make use of these different color sleeves. Again, antibacterial sleeves, very comfor comfortable to hold and also antibacterial, clean to use as well. Okay, um, so that's what I wanted to go over uh, today. FX 951 being a very popular station. Um, I just wanted to make sure people understand how to operate it how to set the temperature, how to, how and when to use the offsets, and how to get into the system parameters. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that um, if you're going to go ahead and make use of the offset feature, it's very important to have one of these uh, tip thermometers, FG100Bs, to verify your tip temperatures. So make sure you have uh, one of these as well. Um, so at this point, um, I guess I'll take some uh, questions if we have any. Zero zero one zero five, maybe o one o o five. We have a. I would recommend a micro iron, a micro iron in the I shape, for, uh, for use with the FX uh, nine fifty one. Um, next question. Do you need to remove the card during operation? Would that affect the offset if you remove the card during? No, um, if I remove the key card during the operation, it's not going to affect the offset or the set temperature. Um, I can actually show you if you go back to this uh, close up. Um, let me just go ahead and turn the station back on. Um, whether I have the lock key card in there or not, um, the station is still going to work on its own, right? But depending on how you set it up um, in your system parameters, uh, like I went over, you always need the lock key to make changes to your set temperature, right? But I made changes to the system parameters, so even right now, without the lock key, I can make changes to the, uh, the offset value as well. Now, if I go back in the system parameters, oh, oops, I need the lock key. Right, and then I go to parameter four, and I turn it to zero, and confirm, 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 and take that out. Now I can't make any kind of changes at all. So um, I hope I cleared up that question for you. I um, think I got time for one more question. When it's going into sleep mode, um, the temperature that it adjusts to will be, it'll drop down all the way to 200, uh, 200 C, and then it'll stay at that point until obviously you pick it up, and then at that point it'll start to recover. Um, that's all the time that I have right now for today's episode. Thank you guys for participating. Hope everyone is staying safe and staying healthy, and I'll see you next time. Remember, keep your eye on Hako. Thank you.